support to Thor. Thor was the strong god, so strong was he that he could crush mountains with one blow of his hammer. His eyes shone like fire. When he drove in his chariot, the sound could be heard all over the earth. When he struck with his terrible hammer, fire streamed through the sky. On one hand, he wore an iron glove to grasp the hammer. Around his waist was a belt. Every time he tightened the belt, his strength was redoubled. If he had crossed the rainbow bridge, it would have fallen down. So every day he waded through four rivers to go to the council of the gods. Thor was usually as good-natured as he was strong, but sometimes he had sudden attacks of anger. Then he drove furiously in his chariot, striking in every direction with his hammer. Sometimes he did damage which with all his strength he could never repair. Very often Thor did kind things. Once the dwarf Orvandal did not go into his home in the ground when the frost giants were in the land. They caught him and took him to Jotunheim. Thor waded across the ice-cold river Elivagar to the land of the giants and brought Orvandal back in a basket. When they were nearly across, Orvandal put one toe outside and it was bitten off by the frost giants. Thor liked nothing better than to go on long journeys, seeking adventures. Once, he set out in his chariot, drawn by goats. Loki, the cunning, went with him. Night came. Thor made himself no larger than a man, and asked to stay all night in a poor man's hut by the seashore. The man welcomed them. Thor killed his goats, and the poor man's wife cooked them. When nothing was left but the bones, Thor told the children to put them all into the skins on the floor, but one of the boys broke a bone to get the marrow. At dawn the next day, Thor touched the bones with his hammer, and the goat sprang up alive, but one of them was lame. When the family saw the bones change into living goats, they were very much frightened. Thor was angry because the goat was lame, and grasped his hammer so tightly that his knuckles grew white. At first he meant to kill the whole family, but after he thought, he only took away two of the children for servants. They crossed the ocean that day and found a forest on the other side. When it grew dark, they went into a cave to sleep. In the cave, there were five small rooms and one large one. All night, they heard a great rumbling noise. Early in the morning, when they went out, they found an immense giant sleeping on the ground. The noise they had heard was the giant's breathing, and the cave was his glove. When Thor saw him, he tightened his belt of strength and grasped his hammer. But just then the giant awoke and stood up. His great height so amazed Thor that he forgot to strike and only asked the giant's name. The giant replied that he was Skrymer. Then he asked to go along with Thor. Thor said he might and they all sat upon the ground to eat breakfast. After breakfast, the giant put Thor's provision sack into his own and carried both. All that day, he strode in front and Thor followed. At night, they stopped. The giant drank a small brook dry, and at once lay down on the ground and fell asleep. Thor found that he could not untie the sack. At this, he was very angry. He tightened his belt and ran out where the giant lay. He swung his hammer above his head and struck the giant's forehead with all his strength. The giant awoke and rubbed his eyes. Then he said sleepily, I think a leaf must have fallen upon me. With that, he fell asleep again. Thor and the others lay down without any food, and the giant snored so that they could not sleep. Again Thor arose. He tightened his belt twice and struck the giant a harder blow than the first. The giant only stared and muttered, This must be an oak tree, for an acorn has fallen upon my forehead. Thor hurried away and waited until the giant once more slept soundly. Then he went softly and struck him so hard that the hammer sank into his head. This time, the giant sat up and looked around him. Seeing Thor, he said, I think there are squirrels in this tree. See, a nutshell has fallen and scratched my forehead. But make ready to go now, we are near the palace of Utgarth. 
You see how large I am. In Utgard's palace I am thought small. If you go there, do not boast of your strength. With that, he directed Thor to the palace and went away northward. At noon, they saw a palace so high that they had to bend back their heads to see the top of it. The gate was locked, so they crept in through the bars and went from room to room until they came to the hall where sat Utgard with his men around him. For some time he pretended not to see Thor, then with a loud laugh he said, Ho, 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 who is this little creature? Without, ha- without waiting for a reply he cried, Why, I believe it is Thor of whom we have heard. Then speaking to Thor for the first time, he said, Well, little man, what can you do? No one is allowed here unless he can do something. Loki, who was quicker than Thor, said, I can eat faster than anyone here. Then Utgard said, Truly, that is something. We will see if you have spoken the truth. The giants brought in a throw, filled with meat. Utgard called Loge, one of his men, to contend with Loki. Loki and Loge met at the middle of the throw, but Loki had only eaten the meat, while Loge had eaten meat, bones and throw. So Loki was beaten. Then Utgard asked what Chalve, the boy Thor, had taken from the seashore, could do. Chalve replied that he could outrun any man there. Utgard called a little fellow whose name was Hugge. Hugge so far outrun Chalve that he turned back and met him halfway. Utgard said, you are the best runner that ever came here, but you must run more swiftly to outrun Hugge. Then Thor was asked in what he wished to contend. He answered, in drinking. Utgard sent the cup bearer to bring his great drinking horn. When Thor took the horn in his hand, Utgard said, Most of the men here empty it at one draught, so empty it at two draughts. But no one ever takes three. Thor put the horn to his lips and drank deep and long. When he was out of breath, he lowered the horn. To his surprise, very little of the water was gone. Utgard said, I should have thought Thor could drink more at the draught. Thor did not reply, but drank again as long as he had any breath. This time enough was gone so that the horn could be carried easily without spilling any of the water. Utgard said, have you not left too much for the third draught? Thor became angry. He put the horn to his lips and drank until his head swam and his ears rang and fire floated before his eyes. But the horn was not nearly empty and he would not try again. Then Utgard said, will you try something else? Thor replied that he would. Utgard said, We have a little game here that the younger children play. The young men think nothing of lifting my cat. I would not propose it to you if you had not failed in drinking. The cat ran in and Thor did his best. But he could only lift one paw from the ground. Then he called for someone to wrestle with him, but Utgard said that the men would think it beneath them to wrestle with Thor. Then he called his old nurse, Ellen, to wrestle with him. The tighter Thor gripped the old woman, the firmer she stood. Soon he was thrown on one knee and Utgard sent the old woman away. The next morning, at dawn, Thor and Loki and the two children prepared to go away. Utgard gave them breakfast and went a little way with them. When he was ready to go back, he asked Thor how he liked his visit. Thor replied that he had done himself dishonor. At this, Utgard said, I will tell you the truth now that we are out of my palace. You shall never come into it again. If I had known your strength, you should not have come this time. In the forest it was I you met. If I had not held the mountain between your hammer and my head, you would have killed me. There is the mountain. The three caves you see were made by the three blows of your hammer. One end of the drinking horn stood in the sea. When you come to the shore, you will see how much water is gone. What you took for a cat was the great Midgard serpent, which encircles the earth and holds it still in its mouth. The nurse was old age. No one can resist her. Hearing this, Thor raised his hammer to strike, but Utgard in the palace vanished and left only a grassy plain. Here amid icebergs, roll I the nations. This is my hammer, Mjolnir the mighty. Giants and sorcerers cannot withstand it. These are the gauntlets, 
wherewith I wield it, and hurl it afar off. This is my girdle. Whenever I brace it, strength is redoubled. The light thou beholdest stream through the heavens in flashes of crimson. Is but my red beard, blown, blown by the night wind, frightening the nations. Jove is my brother, mine eyes are the lightning. The wheels of my chariot roll in the thunder, the blows of my hammer ring in the earthquake. Thor and Hymir, far down in the cool depths of the ocean, dwelt Aiga, the sea god, in a shining palace. The water lapped softly against its clear green walls. All the herds of Ran, the sea god's wife, played about it. Within sat Aiger on his throne, and the winds and waves which were his children went abroad to do his will. On a day when the ocean lay calm and quiet in the sunlight, the gods feasted in Aiger's palace, but Aiger's great kettle was lost, and there was no meat for the guests. Thor shook his great hammer in anger and vowed to bring back the cattle, but no one could tell him where to find it. Tyr said, just within the borders of Jotunheim lives Heimer. He has a cattle a mile deep, but he who goes for it must be wary, for Heimer is a dog-wise and dangerous giant. Thor cried, I fear no giant. Show me the way and I will bring the cattle. So the two gods passed out of Aegir's sea green hall and away through the groves of coral. Dolphins and swordfish played beside their pathway without fear. Soon the gods reached the upper world. There they made themselves look like two young men. Then they traveled away to the land of snow. On the icy shore of the ocean they found Heimer's house. At the door they were met by Heimer's beautiful wife, who was Tyr's mother. The house was dark and gloomy. Very glad was Tyr's mother to see the guests. She bade them welcome, but told them to hide under the kettles. Heimer came home late, with his beard shining with frost. The beams of the low, dark house shook under his feet. My son is here, said his wife, when he had shaken the frost from his hair. Where is he? said Heimer. Behind that post, replied his wife. Heimer's eyes blazed. He stared hard at the post. Instantly it flew into splinters. Eight of the kettles fell clanging to the ground. Out sprang the gods and faced the giant. When Heimer saw his old enemy Thor, he was frightened, so he bade them welcome and ordered three oxen to be roasted, wool for supper. Thor ate two himself, and Heimer thought he would kill no more of his fine black oxen. He thought he would have fish for the next meal. At dawn, the next day, Thor saw Heimer getting his boat out. Thor dressed quickly and asked to go along to do the rowing. Heimer said, you might take cold if you stay out as long as I stay, and the rowing might tire you. Thor was angry enough to box the giant's ears, but he only answered that he could row as far as Heimer wanted to go, and that Heimer would be the first to want to come back. Thor then asked Heimer for some bait. But Heimer said if he wanted to fish, he must find his own bait. At this, Thor marched up to the finest ox in Heimer's herd and wrung its head off. Thor rode with such strength that Heimer was surprised. When he wanted to stop, Thor said they were not out far enough yet. Then Heimer cried in fear, If we go any farther, we will be in danger from the Midgard serpent. At last Thor stopped, and Heimer soon caught two whales. Thor took out the line he had brought from Asgard and baited the hook with the ox's head. The moment the bait dropped to the bottom of the ocean, the Midgard serpent swallowed it. Then Thor tightened his belt of strength and pulled till his feet went through the boat and he stood on the bottom of the ocean. The serpent's head rose to the top of the water. When Heimer saw it, he turned pale and trembled with fright. Just as Thor drew back his hammer to strike, Heimer cut the line and the serpent sank to the bottom. Thor gave the giant a blow with his fist that nearly ended his life. Taking the two whales into the boat, Thor rowed to shore. There he took up the whales and the boat and carried them all into the house at once. At supper, the giant challenged Thor to break his goblet by throwing it. Thor 
threw it against the walls and upon the floor, but it would not break. Then the giant's wife whispered, throw it against Heimer's forehead. Thor did so, and the goblet was shattered. Then the giant said, Thor might have the kettle if he would carry it away. Thor tried to lift it, but could not at first. As he tried, he grew stronger, and at last he put the kettle over his head. But it reached down to his heels, and the handle tripped him. Thor and Tyr traveled as fast as they could with the kettle. After they had gone a long way, Tyr saw Heimer and the host of his friends rushing after them. Thor put down the kettle and killed all the giants. Every harvest time, Eger made a feast for the gods in memory of Thor's bravery. (laughs) 